Okay, so what we have today is that I'm going to show you a neat little trick which has saved my life uh, many a time. And uh, this is to do with photography. Uh, this is a photograph which was um, shot uh, uh, under not very ideal situations. And uh, if I show this to you, this was shot uh, right here. You have it. It's a um, 1855mm lens, uh, 3.556, which is the kit lens, which, uh, and this was a very old lens. So it's not really sharp. This is how it turned out to be. It's got all kinds of hues and color and you know the picture is not really sharp. It's not what you'd uh, send to a client. Uh, also the background and the place where he's standing leaves much to be desired. So uh, what do we do is you have here, you have this color temperature settings. You can of course you know turn it around and you can you know warm it up and all of that um, but um, what I prefer to do especially if there is a white or a black uh, object in the frame I just click on this dropper here and I click on the white object which is this curtain and whoops it goes and it's color corrected now so we'll start uh, we've started by color correcting the image I take the adjustment brush now the thing is how to make this look like a professionally shot image and usually it's set at zero this is what the default reading is so I apply this here and I start painting you won't see anything because all the uh, settings right now at zero but the moment I go back here and I push up the exposure of this brush the magic starts happening and I'll take it all the way to 2.49 basically what I'm doing is I'm blowing out the information on the curtain the schema as we call it and I'm painting very broad strokes around the things, including the ground, which is now turning slightly white. I'm taking care not to overlap the brush, uh, to see that the brush does not overlap the human image, because that will be a problem. How do we go about that? I'll tell you later. So here we are. Uh, we've done this, and now we go for the edges. We basically keep the brush the same, but we turn on auto mask here right here and then start working the edges make the brush smaller so that it doesn't spill auto mask does exactly what it says it auto masks the edges so that the white the brightening that you're doing is most likely not to spill inside the image see how cleanly it's doing it See how neatly it's done this part right here. Just because this was black, it's, you know, I just took the brush in once and it's managed to get everything spot on. And I'll zoom in a bit here to get the inside of the hand. You can see a lot of spots there but yeah largely they can go so I'll zoom out again and yeah seems to be working so I switch off auto mask 
and I just get the remaining portions to blend nicely with what you've done. Get the edges worked out, creases worked out nicely. So this is uh, largely done, uh, but uh, we saw that um, there were some bits of, you know, um, the brush that spilt over to the hair and to the jeans here. So what we're going to do is we're going to erase it and use the same technique, keep auto mask on and erase it. So for the other pieces, we put, do the same thing, go to the brush, add another brush, add overexposure and oops, change the size, clean out the line, clean out the creases and Yeah, we all set. So this is the image. Now let's make it a bit crisp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it even more. Expose it by half a stop more right here so that the skin tones and everything is nice and bright. And that's the way I prefer it. And put in some more const contrast to make the image more punchy. Deepen the blacks a bit. Use the clarity a little bit. Use the vibrance a little bit. Use the saturation very little. And finally, we go to the sharpening tool and we Set the sharpening to about, yeah, to about, that looks good. This, yeah, this is way too much. 50 is good. And there we have it, the final image, ready to be sent to the client. And just for comparison, here is the original, and here is the worked upon image.